What happens here? There's not just a request, please do this particular project or program, but also give it to my, my Bhatijas, Chamchis, whatever, whatever NGO, right? Now, when this happens, will anyone dare to put pressure? Because what will be the first parliament question in the monsoon session of the next parliament? This particular company, how many projects, who are the implementing agencies, how many of these projects were in the constituency of the minister, how many of the NGOs to whom money was given was a relative of the minister, who will answer these questions? Who will answer these questions on the floor of parliament? Which minister? The Minister for Corporate Affairs, Mr. Arun Jaitley. Therefore, if any one minister, just for argument's sake, has asked for a project from one of his NGOs, it becomes immediately in the public domain. How many were in his constituency? We will instantly know because it said there where is the project located? What is the geographical location? There is no escape because it's mapped on the map of India. Where, whom, how, how much, everything is mapped out. All the 16,000 companies, complete matrix is prepared and handed over. Why did we undertake this exercise? Of course, to strengthen the hands of the chief executive. Now, when a chief executive is asked to do something in CSR, typically what does this chief executive say these days? When a chief executive is asked to do CSR in a particular area through a particular agency, these days what do CMDs typically say? Sorry sir, I do know CSR. I have no idea about CSR. I am not in control of CSR in my company. Can he say this? And why does he say it? If you are the chief executive, can you say this? He says, I don't get into it because there is a CSR committee which is also headed by whom? An independent director. I'm sorry, if you want to get your project included, please speak to the independent director. Will anyone speak to the independent director? Chances are the independent director will simply record the voice and pass it on to the CBC. End of matter. No request is entertained by any CMD anymore. If he doesn't want to entertain it, he is empowered by this legislation not to entertain it. If he still wants to bend over backwards, that's his problem. But this legislation is empowering because it gives him or her the strength to say, sorry, tomorrow if there's a question in parliament, I will lose my job and therefore I will not oblige you. Simple as that. If you want to speak to my independent director, you are free to do so. That is the empowerment of this legislation. You need not anymore succumb to any kind of pressure. Okay, so this report at the end of the year, who is going to sign it? Security guard? The uh, toilet cleaner? Doorman? Who will sign this report? Any idea? Who should, in your opinion, sign it? As high as that, you will say, yeah, I sign karu mera. Galai kaat dega koi aadmi, koi bhi project dekh lega, koi media team maha pahunch jayegi, bakwaas likh degi, mein tu mar jauunga. Kya karega independent director? Who will protect him? 
Now, if the general manager CSR is to sign, there is some inquiry. Then the director CSR or the director independent director can at least provide him some protection. Right or wrong? Who should sign this report in your opinion? Hmm? You still believe that? There is nobody to protect him, remember. If he signs, he is personally liable. The moment he signs this, it's all over. In the ministry, in, my, in the public domain, the media, social activists, everyone. If he or she signs, what are the consequences? Responsible. Sorry? Responsible. Is that a risk worth taking? Would you? If you are the CMD of your company, would you sign this? Obviously. Would you feel happy signing it? One person should be given the responsibility and accountability of the CSR activity. So that he can be fired quickly <laughs> by the CMD who is protected. And look at both sides of the argument. <laughs> it's a tough call. No, not you, madam. What I'm saying is, it's a tough call. Because you can argue both sides. If it's part of vote report, then whoever is signing the vote report needs to sign it. Who would you suggest? There is this form, the chairman and the landing director usually sign it. Alright, so let's answer that question. These are the two unhappy people who have to sign this report. Forget the third one, that's only for foreign companies. So you were right all along. There is no protection. This is it. Good, bad, indifferent. You sign, you pay for it. Alright, I will close my uh, presentation here this morning. Thank you for giving me a very patient listening. I will be happy to take any questions that you might have. So have you done yours? Yes. Who are I the members? I have done on 27th of March. That's okay, important. good. How many members are there? Four. It's on your this thing website? What company do you come from? They are the best, so I can't question you. <laughs> Alright, then? The second one is, uh, there is a dilemma of this uh, one of activities and projects. The That's the that dilemma that, that you have to come to grips with, my friend. Realign, rethink, and redo. Next question. No, just add, add yeah. a specific question. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's our group, in Tata Companies, we have uh, this voluntary new concept that uh, some particular period of uh, time we uh, dedicate that all the employees who do not volunteer. When there are activities started out this year. Now the amount spent on those activities, those are all for social benefit, social cause. Now if you say that those are not going to qualify, then there will be a problem. That's the dilemma. So what will be your take on that? Well, do whatever the act and the rules say. What you've done before, junk it. Chuck it out of the window, redo, rethink. Yeah, next. Uh, so my name, uh, my name is Shreyansh. I come from Switch On Energy. We work in. You come from Switch On Energy. Switch On Energy. What is Energy? Uh, it's the name of the company of the organization. Uh, we work in renewable energy and in the social sector. 
uh, in my uh, approach to companies for getting them to implement CSR with us, what I have actually faced is... Uh, uh, what are you, an NGO or a voluntary organization mm -hmm. or a not-for-profit company? Uh, we are an uh, NGO. You're registered under the Society yeah. Registration Act? All right. You uh, have a three-year track record? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I have faced is that they are much more willing to g uh, give away the money for uh, implementation of the projects, but then they do not monitor the impact of the projects constantly. Like, they are not looking for sustainability of the project. So don't you think uh, something like that should be also included in the CSR Act where you get the companies to uh, ensure that the project is sustainable? It's given there that they have to monitor it. It's part of the act, I told you. Now it has to be a project. So when they draw up a project, they have to be very sure what its outcomes are, that it has to be sustainable, replicable, doable, all of these things the company board will decide. That's why the decision on what the CSR project will be becomes a board decision. The purpose of taking a CSR decision at the board is that at the very senior most level, the mind is applied to see that the best quality CSR projects are actually taken up. Next, yeah. the little booklet to no, them? No, no, I have read everything, but I'm okay. just telling you an experience that we face yeah. and how, what do you do about no, it? No, you can say that I'm not sitting in this room. Your choice. I mean, it's either there or it's not there. Now, in those, in Schedule 7, <laughs> it's very clearly satisfied. And there are people like Bharat and myself who believe that sustainability is the big picture and CSR is part of it. In the original uh, NVG guidelines, you will see that I think number 8 or 7 refers to CSR in particular. So if you say that sustainability is not there, you're blind. You're blind as a bat. And you will see in the afternoon session when Mr. Wakil speaks how important sustainability uh, in all of its manifestations is so important for every single company. So whether we want it or we don't want it, that's why in the seminar, you first see business responsibility. Then we say CSR. Because in for a business to be responsible, there are many aspects of it. And CSR is one aspect of that responsibility. The first part is responsible business. So if companies tell you this, I hope that with the passage of time, we will be able to change their vision and thinking. And as an NGO, you must play that role. Don't give up. No, no, I don't. Very good. So you and I will try our best to do whatever we can. There are many enlightened companies. ITC was sitting here for a little while ago. Tata is sitting here. They are all completely on the sustainable mode. You don't, they don't need to be preached. They are already converted. And we are hoping that because we have such great examples in the country, there will be many who will now look at those icons and come on. Yes, sir. So I'm Tapan Gupta representing an NGO, Navodai, we manage a senior citizen's home. Very My good. question to you was sponsorship <coughs> of a fundraising program, the proceeds of which will be utilized for expanding the facility this of the This is a one-time event, hence big question, cross. Okay, no one-time event. You want that your old age home should be sustained over a period of three years, make a project with a corporate house who will help the aged, provide them with health care, provide them with uh, what are they called, L limb, uh, you know, those uh, machineries, uh, prosthetics, provide them with that kind of thing. That's what corporates must do. Just one fundraising evening, you know, like 
each plate costs 5000 rupees pick up a plate and have a dinner that concept of csr is now gone so the purpose is to create another floor whatever be the purpose it's not important having uh, finalized the csr committee of company and uh, deciding the projects afterwards what are the provision for amendments so this is already for amendments amendment. the projects yes. i mean adding the some of the project ah. or See, we our, our idea here is the the ministry is not here to look over your shoulder we want to just create the enabling environment companies are to come on board not because they have to but because they want to therefore we are empowering the boards of companies so if you have framed a policy it's not cast in stone the board can change the policy okay but it can't be done by any junior executive anywhere down the line the board will take a decision this thing is not working let's change to another one that's the board's decision last last you wanted to explain and bn chatterji from sri hospital uh, actually it's a suggestion uh, we are um, talking about the technical matters legal matters of the csr but question is that uh, we should create awareness among the corporate for that csr is beneficial and it creates the brand image also it's benefit it's a long term investment it's not a spending expenditure on the csr is not a spending it is a long term investment of the that corporate body it can create uh, more future market it develops the more customers future customers it develops the brand image of the company so it's a investment so my suggestion is that to create awareness in the corporate world for the same thank you sir very good suggestion i just wanted to mention that please don't do anything that is not rupee measurable whether investment or spending whichever way you want to look at it you can't say my csr is my ethics and my ethics is worth 2% of my net profits what is not measurable in rupee terms is not csr this is the first legislation of its kind created anywhere in the world which says put your money where your mouth is don't preach don't give us speeches don't give us all of this clap trap how much did you spend to the last pi whether you see it as spending or investment you have to tell the wide world so those activities or projects are admissible in csr which are rupee measurable thank you sir i think we'll close for lunch now uh, and reconvene at quarter past 2 right here Uh, lunch is, is at the Palladium on the third level. The lounge is on the third level. The elevators on the left as well as one on the right will take you there. So please join us for lunch and reconvene here at 2:15 sharp. Thank you very much. But before that, sir, we have got a small task to perform. We have to give a memento to Dr. Chatterjee, and I would request our DG. That's a pleasant task, although we are hungry. Our DG Mr. P. Roy is going to present the memento to Dr. Chatterjee. Thank you, sir. We all request you to join us for lunch. Thank you. Please be here by two o'clock.